having a child doesn't mean it has to be the end of your career. If anything, I'm a better athlete now for being a mum and I'm a better mum for being an athlete. I'm Edie Odudu and this is Sporty AF. Sporty and female. I would love to be one of those athletes who goes to the Olympics and then crosses over when I'm, when I'm a little bit older. Like I'd love to cross over to like weightlifting or something like that. A brand new series from Team GB. Being able to monitor things daily, I know way more about my body now as I did 10 years ago. That celebrates everything that's amazing about women in sports. You literally don't know what you're capable of until you put your foot forward and you try. This is our chance to hear from real Olympians. I'd say I'm somewhat the strongest, fittest I've ever been and some people say it's all, but I'm 30 and I feel like I'm in the prime, so. Yeah. <laughs> about what life's really like as a woman in sport at the top of her game. I think it's just about getting messages out there, getting mums that are athletes that are talking, so people realise that you can do it. Let's get started. Great to see you all. Now, I want to talk about the age clock. Do you feel a pressure to pick your sport from a young age and stick to it? I think I definitely did, you know. I used to be a heptathlete, and I think when I was about 18, 19, and competing internationally in heptathlon, I thought, well, I'm in this now, I've done this since I was nine, 10 years old. This is obviously my sport and this is where I found myself. And then I fell right place, right time into cycling. And I remember thinking when they invited me over and said like, would you like to be a part of our program? I was like, I'm way too old for this. And looking back now, I'm laughing <laughs> because I was 21 years old, but yeah, I'm 30 now and I've been in the sport 10 years and I've been to two Olympics, I've had a baby and I'm still in the sport. We definitely need to keep having these conversations because like you said, at the age of 21, you feel past it. Yeah, for sure. Which is bananas Mental. really, <laughs> yeah. if you think about it. Eh? What about you, Abby? Definitely. I did athletics throughout when I was younger until the age of 16 and then I kind of had to pick whether I wanted to play rugby or do athletics and I chose to play rugby and I would love to be one of those athletes who goes to the Olympics and then crosses over when I'm when I'm a little bit older like I'd love to cross over to like weightlifting or something like that oh, that would wow. be like never too my late. absolute yeah exactly my absolute ideal but within rugby like you, we talk a lot about like the body cock and stuff like that but we don't really see many females go past the age of 30 and still compete really highly at a level we only really had Heather Fisher which went through two Olympic cycles and then carried on until I think she was 37 was the oldest woman in our squad by far and she kind of paved a path that we could actually stay on for a lot longer than that. Today we've been joined by Dr K from the UK Sports Institute. Hello. Hello. Tell me all about daily monitoring. When athletes, as they go through their, their sort of career, often we ask them to do some monitoring on a number of different parameters because it really allows us and them to see where they're at. So they have an app um, and we ask them to monitor things like sleep, both duration and quality, because we know if sleep goes down, that increases your injury and illness risk. We look at mood, so we look at mental health symptoms. We look at delayed onset muscle soreness. Uh, we look at resting heart rate. We can look at menstrual cycle data. So there's a lots of different data that we look at the general health of athletes and how they respond to training. Mm -hmm. And then we can use that to, to adapt and change schedules as needed. You're nodding along. Yeah. Have you experienced yeah, yeah. this? Do you like it or not? No, I do, I do. And fun fact, nearly all of our squad is synced on our menstrual cycle. So like a few weeks ago in camp, we're all like, why do we all feel like this? And we're like, oh, actually it's because we're all on our period. These apps and stuff like that, they're crucial in just like international professional sport because even just from knowing we're all on our period, you t tailor the training to make sure um, that you're not pushing too, too hard out of those type of comfort zones. Being able to monitor things daily, I know way more about my body now as I did 10 years ago. I have the same coach now as I did then, and it's really? quite rare that, like, right. especially in our sport, mm. for someone to keep going for that long. Just through conversations, I ended up coming like off the pill because we kind of figured out that a lot of my mental health stuff came from that. It was the best decision I've ever made. It was difficult to have this conversation with male coaches, um, but I was thankful that I have a, an amazing coach that kind of started that conversation. Putting it all together, the monitoring, talking about menstrual cycles mm. and the pill and everything. It's very, very interesting. And I feel like we're only just scratching the surface, really. Oh. You learn, learn about yourself. And I think now I'm a lot more self-aware and all that, I think, actually allows me to be a better, fitter, stronger athlete now. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. 
I'd say I'm somewhat the strongest, fittest I've ever been. And some people say it's all, but I'm 30 and I feel like I'm in the prime. So yeah. <laughs> you are. Yeah. And you're just getting better. So hopefully. Win win. I was had that anxiety telling the t the sport I was pregnant in the first mm. place. Just felt like there was gonna be judgment there. Mm. Um, but no, from the start, been super, super supportive. Dr. K, you of course have a lot of experience with working with many athletes, but athletes that are returning back to the sport after pregnancy. So what's that experience like? It's a real privilege to, to work with athletes both during their pregnancy and then planning their training when we get back. Lots of athletes like to plan because their, their routines and their structures is, is always about what's the next sort of goal. So we work with, with athletes and their coaching teams to say, okay, when you come back to us, what does that look like? Is it still training whilst pregnant? Some athletes will, you know, taper their training maybe in the third trimester. Uh, we've also got athletes that will train right up until, until they have a baby. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah, so, but it's, it's fantastic. They, they train all the way through. Wow. I mean, Katie, I know that you've got a little one. How was that? I was really, really fortunate that throughout my pregnancy, I was able to train right up until the end. I think I did my last lifting gym session when I was 39 and a half weeks pregnant. You was lifting weights? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> to the, inten the intensity was different and my training had varied all the way throughout my pregnancy. I felt really fortunate that my body was still able to do it. That's what sh helped shaped my return after yeah. having uh, my son. And then I just wanted to keep going and I felt physically capable, so I did. And what about you, Nicola? You are a mum too. So did you enjoy training throughout your pregnancy? I did, I enjoyed training. I think it was just like, that my normal constant, something to kind of focus on every day. Mm. I trained every day, right up until about 35, 36 weeks. There's so many questions that I need to ask around babies, not to leave you out, <laughs> I will bring you in. I've not got a baby either, so I'm with you. <laughs> but did you feel pressure to keep training or was that something that you actually wanted to do? For me, it was definitely a case of just something that I wanted to do. I personally never felt any pressure and I knew I wanted to try and go to Paris Olympics. So mm. my vision of what the next three years looked like included a lot of training. And it was actually really enjoyable to be able to train differently, I guess. I felt like I had a happy, healthy body and that was gonna grow a happy, healthy baby. So yeah, that was something that kept me going. This is so impressive. Cause I'm like, wow, you had no pressure to do it, yet you did it. And I don't have any pressure to do stuff, but don't do it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Should really take a leaf out of your book. It's so impressive. <laughs> but what sort of support is there for women who are going through pregnancy in the world of sport. Dr. K, is there maternity leave? There absolutely is, yeah. A few years ago, UK Sports, along with the R Institute, put together some fantastic resources for athletes. It outlines maternity, what the structure looks like, how to have difficult conversations, what to expect as an athlete, both when you're pregnant and when you're coming back from pregnant. Wow. I Good felt really supported as well, same as you, yeah, really. Yeah. I was had that anxiety telling the, t the sport I was pregnant in the first mm. place. I just felt like it was going to be judged there mm. um, but no from the start been super super supportive um, and just kind of let me lead but whilst giving me the information oh, I needed. so good to hear because I know what you mean in terms of I do I definitely have had a few friends from varying um, industries who feel scared to tell their bosses or tell their team members that they are pregnant mainly because they feel like there's going to be a limitation put onto you have you been put off by having children because of your sport. Definitely. Mm. Like, there's no one really in, like, British canoeing that has had a baby and come back. Wow. Um, well, there's always been this narrative, of, like, once you retire or whatnot, you can then have a family and things like that. But there's a lot of international paddlers that have had babies and come back and become an Olympic champion. And mm. it's those people that I'm like, why are we not doing that? Yeah. So in having these conversations really kind of inspire me to ask those questions. Like, is it possible? Like, can I come back? And I mean, I'm sitting in a boat, so I feel like I can probably get back to it pretty quickly rather than sitting on a saddle. So it's probably pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's something that I'm definitely going to be asking more about. Yeah, absolutely. And do you feel the same, Abby? Yeah, like, so the RFU only just put in their maternity policy, mm. I think maybe last year or the year before. So there actually wasn't really anything in there for us and definitely within within rugby you, do, you don't see it i think there's one lady at the moment abby ward and she she's pregnant and the rfu have been really really amazing with supporting her but i in my mind i just always thought that yeah i'll have babies when i finish playing but just because you don't you don't see it like yeah. especially within 
but then you see it in contact sports but I, I like in in my contact sport like there's literally probably about two people internationally who actually have children and who come back. I could barely get into the car towards the end, <laughs> let alone get, get my legs up on a bike. I had days when I felt completely normal and really capable and felt like I could do anything. And then I had days when I was like, I don't think I'll ever be an athlete ever again. What's the actual reality of training whilst pregnant? Like, can you be on a bike? Yeah, I was really fortunate that I could still ride my bike. As long as I could get my knees up around my belly somewhere, I could ride my bike. If your body says it's all right, it's generally all right. <laughs> yeah, listen to it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Again, it's really individual uh, on that particular athlete or on the sport. Just got to tweak it. Just got to tweak it, but keep on training. Yeah. Absolutely. What was the reality like for you? Can you still do judo whilst pregnant yeah so judo obviously a full con contact judo i couldn't do but i was doing some gripping up until like halfway oh. which is just like gripping onto the gi and not actually like con like making contact with your partner i did have some issues some uncomfortableness around the pelvis oh, okay. and so it, it, as she got heavier as well my little one it was a lot harder to to do it just from a pain point of view i could barely get into the car towards oh. the end <laughs> let alone get get my legs up on a bike i couldn't have done i mean that. my handlebars were sky high and i was literally <laughs> sat bolt upright but it meant I could turn my legs over and yeah that made me feel better so yeah. went for it. <laughs> Can you tell me specifically about postpartum training what was it like getting back on the bike after your baby? I had days when I felt completely normal and really capable and felt like I could do anything and I was limited by professional advice to be like not to go too hard or not to do anything too mm. strenuous so I found that like mentally quite hard and then I had days when I was like I don't think I'll ever be an athlete ever again like I don't physically feel capable I don't feel like I can do that and I think it was just about managing those days. I started Pilates after a couple of weeks of having him um, and I definitely think that was the key to my return just to be able to get my body back working obviously started at a really low level and just progressed everything like throughout the pregnancy it was about like regression and then after having him and getting back to training was about like the progression on the other side I got back racing after about five months which yeah, I was really happy with and was ahead of schedule and then physically I'd say it's been all right logistical nightmare <laughs> and dealing yeah. with being a mum is really really hard yeah. but yeah physically in terms of training I've um yeah I've had a pretty smooth ride I think can the same be said for you <laughs> more up and down yeah the birth was quite and the pregnancy was quite a lot on my my body so it, it took a little while to kind of get the body back in a way you know you have to have enough strength to be able to train so it was about getting that strength back first in like the core and everything because there's so much that happens to a woman's body like obviously if you just think like oh the have the baby and then it, the stomach just goes back yeah. down and then you're good to go but did you have any ab separation or anything yeah. like that? I had ab, ab separation and just looking in the mirror and dealing with a completely different new body. Just had to get that strength back and then start building from there. It was just a very slow process. I think a little bit different to you in terms of the fact that I didn't really have any goals or intentions of like, okay, I'm getting back to judo. So for me, it was just like, let's just progress each week and just see where we end up. And then I started judo again at around the five, six month mark. So you were kind of back racing by then. But yeah, um, back now yeah so. that's so good you just start somewhere and yeah. you slowly just put one foot in front of the other and you'll get there it's definitely something that i always was put off by mm. because i just thought that oh i don't know if my body could do that and come back from it definitely hearing you guys speak about it makes me feel like it is it is possible how do you feel your body has changed if at all since having your baby my body was a tool through everything that i've done anyway in sport but to be able to I guess watch my body grow a baby I just felt powerful and I just felt really capable and I think I take that into training now every day you know I do a session and I think my body grew a human being like my body can get through these 30 second efforts in sprint and yeah yeah I think I just have a newfound respect for myself I guess yeah oh that's brilliant so you've had a real mental shift for yeah, sure yeah, yeah. would you echo that Nicola? a hundred percent um I judo is a weight controlled sport so I've spent my whole life watching the scales mm. and when I was pregnant I put on like plus 20 kilos obviously there's that if I'm going to come back to the sport I'm going to have to potentially make weight again I actually actually came back in better shape than I was before. I was just like, well done, bud. <laughs> you did good. <laughs> Pat on the back to me. <laughs> Dr. Kate, what do you think we can do to encourage more people to live their lives exactly how they want to live them and to not feel hindered by going through the natural processes of yeah. life, let's say? I think it's fantastic that athletes are actually coming to us and, and talking about what would it look like? How can we help them with that? So I think it's just about 
getting the messages out there, getting mums, their athletes that are talking. So people realise that you can do it. And we do get people back and train at Olympics. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. here, here. Yeah. <laughs> I do think they're trying to change the narrative around sport yeah. and making yeah. it possible. I remember when I was 23, 24 years old, I was like, the next Olympics, I, when I'm 25, I'll, you know, I'll have it all together. I'll be married, I'll have kids and stuff. And then actually I was like, I don't know if that's possible within like my career and mm. that means that will be the end of my career and I think it was changing the narrative around like having a child doesn't mean it has to be the end of your career if anything I'm a better athlete now for being a mum and I'm a better mum for being an athlete it just shows how like diverse and accessible life really can be I guess it's definitely something that I always was put off by mm. because I just thought that oh I don't know if my body could do that and come back from it. Um, yeah. Definitely hearing you guys speak about it makes me feel like it is it is possible, especially you talk about from a contact sport as well. Yeah. Like it, yeah. it definitely it definitely is it definitely is possible. possible. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. What advice do you have for young athletes who look to you as role models? I'd say ask the question. Yeah. If you've got any queries, just ask the question and believe as well. Mm. You don't you literally don't know what you're capable of until you put your foot forward and you try. Try, try and try again. What an <laughs> we're amazing. all just trying. <laughs> we're, just all, we're just all having a bash. <laughs> well, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much for chatting to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having us. <laughs>